Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, reviewing Supermarket Teas Georgia edition. If you haven't seen these videos before, I've done a few of them. In these videos, I blind taste teas which have been sent kindly to us by tea heads all around the world, purchased from supermarkets. I try to guess the tea, I try to guess the price point, and then I rate the tea all the way from poison to pinnacle tea. Pinnacle tea meaning that it's a tea which is good enough for Mayleaf to stock. But before I dive into these teas, I want to talk a little bit seriously about the purpose of these videos and throw out a discussion for you out there. Because I've received some constructive criticism and I think fair points from tea heads out there regarding these videos. The criticism being that by encouraging supermarkets to bring in higher quality teas and let's first start with the point that I'm under no illusions that supermarkets are all waiting with bated breath for me to review their teas. I'm sure that these videos are not very high up on their priority list of things to watch, but let's assume that we are having an influence. The criticism is that by trying to encourage supermarkets to stock higher quality teas, the risk is that those supermarkets with a big, big wallet of buying power will approach higher quality specialty tea producers and get them to reduce quality all with the temptation of high spend. And I think that that is a valid point. That could potentially happen. The other criticism is from the consumer point of view, by reducing the gap between faux premium, let's call it, and true premium quality tea, by reducing that gap a little bit, then consumers may be less likely to go and explore true tea and specialty tea because they think that they're getting the top quality tea. The counter to that argument is that from the producer point of view, the supermarkets may be approaching their already existing commodity producers and try to get them to raise quality to make their tea production a little bit more artisan. So it may increase the uh, overall quality of teas. And yes, that means yield may slightly reduce, but if the supermarkets feel that they can get more spend out of the consumers, by producing high quality tea or stocking high quality tea, then they may well do that. From the consumer point of view, my thought was that by increasing the quality of tea on the supermarket shelves, you might get more people, and let's not be under any illusion, 95% or more of consumers out there are purchasing their teas from supermarkets. So if we can introduce more of those people to higher quality tea, then they may make that jump to true tea, to pinnacle tea. Supermarket teas will never have the same quality as the specialty tea sellers, simply because they are under very much different levels of pressure in terms of purchasing. So it's never gonna be that they're gonna match the true tea, but the consumers who get that taste may jump across and it's vital that we continue to feed consumers to the true tea market to help sellers and to help producers. If you look at the situation in Japan where their top end teas on the domestic market, the consumer base is falling, the sales are falling, that is something that we don't want to see in specialty tea. We want to see a healthy consumer base. So what do you think? Do you think that these kinds of videos are going to help to increase quality and increase the number of consumers discovering true tea, or do you think it's gonna do the converse, reduce the quality and potentially make more consumers think that they're drinking the best stuff when they aren't? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I truly am interested to know what you think, and we may or may not continue this this series of videos. Right, let's dive into this one for the time being. These teas are all from Georgia, kindly sent in by Yorgi, who is uh, very much a tea head, uh, um, somebody who is drinking a lot of Mayleaf teas, so I know he knows his stuff. So I know nothing about these teas apart from that they're from Georgia. I'm gonna make the assumption, I don't know this, but I'm gonna make these assu the assumption that these are all Georgian teas because Georgia has a long history in tea. Ever since the, the mid to late 19th century, they've had, they have a long history in making tea. Um, and then at the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s, 
their tea production started to fall. Before that, they were, they were producing tea for the Soviet Union, so they were producing lots and lots of tea, a big, big production. Quality, I don't know about at that time, but my assumption was that it was a lot of commodity tea. But since the collapse of the Soviet Union, a lot of the factories closed down, a lot of the fields started to go into disrepair and start to become unmanaged. There are some people, uh, renegade teas in Georgia, who are starting to uh, bring back um, Georgian teas. But Georgia has a long history of tea making, and I'm assuming that these are all Georgian teas, but I don't know for sure. Right, let's dive in with number one here. I tell you what, I'm going to put it in this guy one, and then I will transfer into another warm guy one. There you go. Take a look at that. So this is clearly a green tea. The look of it, the style of it is, um, you know, it, it's sort of medium quality, reminds me a lot of low grade to medium grade, but more on the low grade side of Chinese green teas. Um, it could be a Chinese green tea, but I'm gonna guess that's Georgian. Let's warm up another guy one so that we can give it a fair shot. Doesn't look particularly high quality, but doesn't look very broken. It's certainly a, a lot better than a lot of teas that I've been sent from supermarkets. Right, let's warm up this teaware. And then I wanna weigh up, I guess about three and a half grams. I've got my tiny guy one here, 70 mil guy one, I love this guy won for solo brews. Yeah, that should be enough, 3.5 grams. That's good. I'll put this back in the tin. Right, let's have a sniff. Doesn't smell bad. Has a sort of creamy note to it. Sweet, creamy. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Luan Guapien, melon seed green made from larger tea leaves. I'll put a link in the description below if you don't know about that tea. Yeah, it's got a sweet, creamy, slightly old smelling. It doesn't smell particularly fresh, so I don't think it's gonna be the freshest of teas, but it's a nice tea. It smells nice. Let's give it a rinse with this water here. Frog can try some Georgian tea. I don't think the frog has ever had some Georgian tea before. Let's smell these wet leaves. Yeah, smells very nice. Mm. Very happy. This is a good start, Yorgi. Yeah, creamy, a little bit buttery, but definitely got still some fresh verdant notes, a little bit of like zucchini courgette happening there, cooked courgettes. Very, very nice. Check water temperature. Cool, 80 degrees. We're gonna hit it direct with that temperature water. And we're gonna let that brew. So as I said, please let me know your thoughts regarding this. I know that there are some strongly held opinions out there. I'd be interested to know what you think. Of course, the last thing that I want to do is reduce quality of tea. And also we've got to think about impact of environment, you know, commodity tea making versus more artisan tea making that focuses on diversity, focuses on making sure that there's a varied ecosystem is very, very important. Um, the idea originally was that by produ producing these videos, not only to entertain you slightly, but also to help to encourage consumers to go seek out the better supermarkets and for, and for supermarkets to start to Ask their producers to raise standards. Right, look at the color, nice, vibrant. Yellow, green, chartreuse kind of color. Looking good for Georgian tea, assuming it's Georgian. Taste, has a nice, clean, bracing quality to it. Reminds me a little bit of a very light bilochen or green coil. It's got that sort of Little tang, little bit of elderflower, um, that 
courgette is still there or zucchini, but now it's raw. It's got a very good freshness to it, but it still maintains some cream. Definitely still maintains some creaminess. Again, it reminds me a little bit of a Luan Guapian, but, but fresher, like if you mixed a Luan Guapian with a Bilochen, which is high praise indeed. Now, I'm not saying it's as good quality, but the flavor profile is there. The criticism that I have of it is, and this is a criticism that I have of a lot of Georgian teas, because I have tasted Georgian teas before, of course, that they tend to be um, quite soft, which some people may like, soft, easy drinking, but lack um, a depth of finish that those of you who know me and my tastes know is what I crave whenever I am selecting tea. It's gotta have aftertaste, it's gotta have finish. I don't want something that's too soft and too clean. Leaves look good, as you can see. Yeah, nice. You know, it's a lovely, easy sipping green tea. Fresh, but creamy, has a slight shortbready strawberry note, which is again very similar to melon seed green or Luan Guapian. It does have some physicality, a little bit of pull. It's got a little bit of an iodine finish, a little bit of a seaweedy note happening towards the end, but, or sea urchin, just that little creamy iodine note happening, but very, very pleasant, very, very drinkable. Um, I am gonna say that this is a Georgian green tea. Um, I don't know Georgian green tea types enough, so I can't say exactly, you know, which cultivar it is. I'd be interested to know if they have listed that on their packaging. Price point on this, I mean, I'm assuming that it's in the four to five cents per gram range. Um, rating on it, let's see that scale. It's definitely above meh. I would say it's definitely above worth reinfusing. I just did, as you can see. Is it above stashable? You know what? I would say it is. I would keep this tea. I would hold on to it. Is it a proper session? I think no. I think that I wouldn't call this a proper session. Um, I would say that this is worth having in your cupboard as an easy sipper. I'm going to give this a 6.4. 6 6.4 on this. A very good start, I have to say. If you've seen my previous videos, you will see I would not be brewing it three times. <laughs> mm. You know, it's light. It's a little bit lacking in terms of depth and complexity, but 6.4. George and green tea. Celine has written down the information here. Let's take a little look here. So this is, oh, I don't know what that means. Shemok Medi. I don't know if that's a cultivar or if Celine has mistakenly put down a brand name, which we say we're not gonna reveal brand names unless the score is eight or above, but I'm not sure. I guess that's a brand name. Um, maybe Yorgi can put it in the comments. Shemok Medi, Shemok Medi, sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation. It's a green tea, two cents a gram. That is, okay, that's a bargain. That's a great value for this tea, great value. Wow, season unknown, cultivar unknown, this is the problem. Um, origin is, what does that say? Guria in Georgia, so it's a Georgian uh, green tea. Picking is unknown, elevation is unknown. I'm sure you could look it up. Um, on Google Maps and start to try and find out where it was picked. But um, not enough information, but that tends to be the case with a lot of these teas. And that's what I mean. Like if we can increase the, the quality, maybe supermarkets would be a bit more transparent about where they get it from. And that may drive up quality because they'll be more likely to source from better quality areas. But the discussion is out there. It could go the other way. Two cents a gram. I think that's a bargain for that tea. Let's move on to tea number two. Here we go. Uh-huh, another green tea it looks like. Let's see. Looks more broken, this leaf. Does not look as high quality compared to the first one. 
yeah you can see broken up larger leaves a little bit darker as well I think I can show you some of the leaves of the previous one but we're going to hydrate it and then compare it I'll put those there since we're doing a back-to-back -back of green tea we can uh, afford to do that let's warm up this guy one and let's get three and a half grams in here you just do it like this warm it up turn this on three and a half grams as eyeball it Ooh, not good enough there you go around that okay have a sniff oh yeah not no not into that not into that smell this is the smell that I get a lot with uh, with cheap green teas oh, went up my nose so it's a combination of Sakura Sakura cherry blossom but there's different kinds of Sakura cherry blossom smell and there's a certain smell which is just stale which just smells old this smells old but more than that because I can live with that not everything on supermarket shelves are going to be super fresh but there's this stale smoky quality so it smells old and it smells like it was scorched during the production very much that I don't like this smell so it's sort of like I'm gonna say it as if it's a nice thing it's a sort of sweet smoke but sweet like sickly smoke smell and that is something which you smell a lot with low quality teas I mean it's like I think the best way to describe it is <laughs> is if you've taken an ashtray and it's got that that kind of ashtray smell but then you've like washed it in or you've you've rinsed it in sugar sugary water it's like sugar and ashtray and it really is off-putting I don't like that smell at all let's give it a rinse I don't have high hopes for this tea I'm not even gonna give it to the frog yeah mulchy oh even worse oh yeah no it's definitely just this pungent really I mean one thing you can say is it's definitely rich in aromatics but the aromatics are not nice they're stale ashtray it's like ashtray and stale wet wood and a little farmyard stable going on you know it's just funk but the wrong kind of funk okay here we go give it a fair shot even though I and look at the color as well lacking vibrancy this is the wash of course but lacking vibrancy looking dusty not looking good at all I'm gonna do this through a filter into my nice new porcelain blue shell cups if you want to check these out they're on the website these are new in perfect with the tiny guy one great I love this way of brewing just my solo brewing no gong da base straight in yeah look at that compared to the first tea murky pond water mmm mm -mm. sour stale mmm ashtray uh, licking an ashtray yeah. it's got that um, herbal licorice -y, but again like like stale licorice sweetness nothing going for this tea mm, mm, mm. it gets worse as you drink it not drinking any more of that well 
I need to do texture. Yeah, watery, dry. Is there anything redeeming about this tea? No, it just dissipates into this sort of vaguely sort of, again, ashtray water. Ooh, not nice. Um, I'm gonna guess this is another Georgian green tea. I'm gonna guess the price point, well, I hope that it's lower than the first one. Um, the first one was two cents a gram. I would say that this shouldn't be anything above two cents a gram. Let's say one to two cents a gram. The first one was very good, very good um, value. Um, rating on this, let's look at that scale. This is below, you can call it T. You know what, given the fact that it tastes so much like an ashtray, if you had given me bong water and, and you forced me to drink it, I would imagine that it would taste fairly similar to this. I'm gonna give it a 1.9. It's in bong water territory, I'm afraid to say. Really dislike that tea. Ugh, from such high heights, we have a dizzying fall. Yeah, take a look at the difference in the leaves here. Mulch versus much better picking. Right, uh, let's take a look at what this is. Ooh, it's just a watery and slightly ashy aftertaste. So this is called Prince Guri Gurielli. Prince Gurielli green tea, <gasps> six cents per gram. How is that three times the price of the first tea? I will never know. No information apart from the fact that it is from Georgia. That is overpriced for, for any tea and certainly is overpriced for bong water. I would not be buying that one. Not, not good. Let's move on to tea number three. So a 6.4 diving to a 1.9. What does T number three have in store for us? Okay, this is interesting. Nice full leaf. Let's start there. Um, and the reason why I'm hesitating is because I'm not quite sure of the tea type here. It kind of looks like a green tea, but it also kind of looks like it's a larger picking and slightly darker, like a Baojong style light oolong tea, perhaps. Um, it has a sort of a Dansong kind of quality to it as well. You know, those this strip look. It looks like it could be either a quite dark and sort of unusual green tea or a very light oolong tea. Not quite sure. Um, the guy one has already been heated up. So we don't have to waste any time. Let's put again 3.5 grams in here. See if I can eyeball it. Uh, I'm not looking, not looking. Just gonna see if I can get it right. Uh, okay, that. Oh yes, 3.5 on the dot. There you go. The fun we have. Okay. Ooh. Wow. So I'm I'm picking up cocoa notes, very chocolatey, but then it also fresh. Chocolate to begin with, and then the more you breathe in. It goes a bit creamy and malty, chocolatey, and then if you do quick sniffs, it's it's got a, a, a green tea quality to it. Um, what temperature? Water. Let's let's throw it in between. Let's do ninety degrees. This is an interesting tea. Certainly not your standard looking teas. Is it a green? Is it an oolong? Ooh, okay, it smells more like a green tea, but it's still got 
oolong sort of flor floral notes and this chocolate, chocolatey, chocolate and cherry, very engaging aroma, certainly not something that there's smells that I've all smelled before in tea, but not put in one tea. You know, it, it's, a, it's a strange mix up. Um, so I'm going to guess this is Georgian again. I mean, that's not a very difficult guess, but simply on the basis that this is certainly a tea type that I am not that familiar with. And if therefore, if it was from China, Japan or Taiwan or India, Sri Lanka, I should know it. I'm not as familiar with Georgian teas. Let's give this a nice, relatively long brew. I really want to see if I can guess this tea. Therefore, I'm brewing it a little bit stronger. Don't need the filter. Color is, yeah, I mean, not giving me much in terms of help. It's more in the green tea territory, I would guess you could say, but it certainly has a Light oolong potentially um, color as well. I'm very interested to taste this. The chocolate is coming out. But it has the brightness of a green tea. I'm getting things like chocolate bourbon biscuits. I don't know if you know those, but sort of not super high quality, cheap chocolate biscuits, a little bit of milk chocolate in there. A little bit of mineral stoniness, a little bit of chalkiness, a little bit seaweedy on the end. It's like a tea that can't quite make up its mind and I'm not sure if I like it for that or not. Um, but it's definitely something that is intriguing and it certainly is very drinkable, unlike the previous one. Quite dry. I'm going to plump that this is a, this is a green tea, but it's produced in an interesting way to, to, maybe it's been produced with a longer period of time when it's been um, left um, to wither. Like it's not been pan fried or, or, or heated up very soon after picking. It's sort of been left in a moist environment a little bit to just bring out a little bit more of the depth and darkness because it's a sort of wet um, processing it tastes like. You know, a little bit deeper, more mulched, but not in a bad way still clean, which I think is why it's a larger leaf picking, because if it was smaller leaf picking, I think that it would not be that clean. I think it would, it would get broken up. It's definitely a longer processing in this. Um, there's more oxidation in a wet environment, but I would still class it as a green tea. You can see the color of the leaves <laughs> when I compare it to that other green tea over here. It's actually even lighter than that green tea here, but that doesn't say much because we know what we think about that tea. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's a green tea from Georgia. I'm gonna say it's relatively ex more in the expensive range. I would say it's probably in the six to 10 cents, let's say seven, let's say eight cents per gram. But, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I would definitely, Definitely. Oh, it's got a little floral note, which again makes me think it's it's been withered or processed to, to bring out some of that oolong fragrance, even though I would still guess it's a green tea. Rating on this, I think, is pretty high, actually. Mm. It's got a freshness. It's interesting. It's like a tea that has a split personality, but I like that about it. It's got character. So let's take a look at that scoring. Definitely above worth reinfusing. Definitely above stashable. A proper session. Just for the sheer interest in it. Just for the fact that it's something a little bit different as a green tea, if it's a green tea. 
I'm gonna go 7.1. Pretty high score, pretty high scoring. But I think that I'm just fascinated by it. Maybe after I've drunk it a few times, I might, you know, wanna regrade. But you know what? Let's just, let's be on the generous side. 7.1. Let's see what this is. I'm actually really interested to see what this is. This is a yellow tea. Okay, all right, didn't think of that. Should have thought of that. Yeah, moist environment processing, yellow tea. So it's not produced in the same way as yellow teas in China, clearly. So they have a sort of different style or definition of what yellow tea is in Georgia. I don't know how they define it. I'd be interested to find out if anybody of you uh, know how they define their yellow tea processing because it doesn't look like it's been processed in the same way, but it certainly has had more processing and certainly there's been moist environment uh, processing there. Season unknown, cultivar unknown, everything unknown apart from the origin, which tells me a village. Village Gurianta. Corianta um, in Georgia. Price point, six cents per gram, good value. Good value for that score tea. I would quite happily drink another round of that. So that's very good. Nice. We're back on track with these Georgian teas. 7.1, pretty high score for this Georgian yellow tea. All right, let's hit our last tea. Guy one is warming up. Ah, I was wondering when I'd get a black tea. So Georgia is famous for their black teas. I don't know what percentage split it is, but I would imagine that at least half of their teas are black, the other half being green and some clearly yellow. Um, look at the leaves look pretty good, pretty good. A bit like fluffy and large, so not super fine pickings, but look good, nice twisted quality about them. Color is this nice sort of deep, 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 deep prune um, brown black with that sort of matte gunmetal look to it as well. Guy one is warm. Uh, we'll do another three and a half grams of this as well. I should quit while I'm ahead, but let me just try and eyeball it. Um, this is gonna be slightly denser. I'm gonna go there. Ooh, over the top. Four, see, should have quit while I was ahead. Okay, anyway, let's have a sniff. Ho, oh. oh, hello, this is nice. Like cherry cough sweets. Flowers, like white flowers. A little bit of varnish, a little bit of chocolate, but understated, lovely balance on it. Fruity as well. But the fruit is like a cooked down cordial Black currant cordial, little bit of chocolate, little bit of a white flowers. Mm. Oh, really nice smell on that. Really nice smell. Surprisingly high grade smell. Oh, and it keeps going. A little bit of woodiness coming through, but so, so nice. Some nuts, hazelnuts, a little bit of, of freshly varnished, um, fresh cut wood and fruity bags and bags of fruit. I'm getting cordial like a um, blackcurrant and, you know, grape juice, like white grape juice. Not quite in the Muscatel dessert wine um, territory, but definitely got a grape quality to it. Oh, that is probably one of the nicest smelling supermarket teas that I have ever had the pleasure of 
sniffing. If I had received this as a sample from any country, I would be excited to taste this tea. Ooh, I am excited. Georgia, coming correct with their black teas. If this tea tastes as good as it smells, then we're in for something quite special. Now, all of the teas have to come from a supermarket. How do we define a supermarket? Well, they have to sell all sorts of things from toilet paper to cat food. Um, you know, it can't be a specialty tea shop or a specialty tea seller. Mmm. All right. High hopes here. Cheers. <sighs> Texture, a little bit thin, but got a nice, nice kick to it. A little bit physical. <sighs> nice puckering note. Flavor. A little bit of cherry. Pencil shavings, pencil shavings. Again, I don't mean that in a negative way, but that freshly sort of cut wood or freshly shaved wood is there as a structure. You've got cherries, the black currant cordial I wish was coming out, but it isn't. It's more cherries and wood, nothing wrong with that. It's got a soft, character to it. Maybe I'm going to hit it a bit harder. Let's just see what we can do with a direct on the leaves brew. If you don't know the difference between rim brewing and direct brewing, check out the video. It makes a difference and you can start to really just sort of fine tune, dial in your parameters whenever you're tasting a tea. Mmm. Nice aromatics, really nice. Pencil shaving, but I mean that in a really nice nostalgic way, you know? It's got like um, a craft workshop kind of taste to it, mixed in with some, a little bit of tang. I wanna say elderflower, but not quite as tangy. And sweet cherries. For those of you who've had little tongmu, this is very high praise indeed, because you know it's one of my favorite black teas. If you've had little Tonglu, it has similar profile. It's just, it tastes like it's the fifth infusion of a little Tonglu rather than the first. You see, brewed it longer, brewed it direct. Let's see how it holds up to that. Holds up very well, stays soft, stays supple. A nice dry little, um, grip, but nothing too extreme. My only criticism, again, again with Georgian teas, it's just like you're waiting for the flavor to just amp up a little bit and it's not quite there. It's very soft, it's very clean. It's got nice aromatics. You just wish that the volume had been turned up on them. And that is to do with terroir and to do with the quality of the plants, not really about the quality of the processing because the quality of processing on these leaves, I would say is very, very good. A very, very enjoyable black tea, satisfying. So really lovely, really lovely tea, probably the best tea I've tasted on supermarket teas. I wanna smell the empty cup. It's there, a little bit of marzipan. It's not in your face, but it's there. This is quality. This is a quality tea. No question about it. Sweet again. Marzipan and plums. Very, very nice. Very, very nice tea. Georgian black tea. Um, I don't know, price point, I, I would say it's a black tea, so you'd think it would be a bit cheaper. Um, let's say, given everything else, we're talking around six or seven cents per gram. My score on this, this is gonna be interesting. Well, it's definitely above worth re-infusing. It's definitely 
above stashable. Is this a proper session? You know what? This is certainly a proper session. I'm very much enjoying this tea. I would say that this is just, it's got, it's got good aroma, pruny aroma. I'm going to give it a 7.4. 7.4, it doesn't quite make the sort of high sevens and eights simply on the basis that I know that this probably another couple of infusions and we're, we're done. If it had more depth, it would definitely be up in the eights. High quality black tea, I think I'm right in saying that that's up there with the highest scores that I've given for teas reviewed on, these ser on this series of videos. Really, really love it. So. Georgian tea scores are pretty high. Oh, we need to check out what this tea is first. It's a black tea. <laughs> Very accurate price. So this is Mana black tea. Again, don't know if that's a brand or if that's a cultivar. Mana black tea, price point, very reasonable. Very reasonable for this quality of tea. Certainly would recommend that. Um, no information on the scope, apart from that it's from Georgia. Georgian black tea, impressed. Impressed with that. So what did we have? We had a 7.4, a 7.1, a 1.9, very, very bad, and a 6.4. That I think is the highest average, although that 1.9 might be bringing it down, that we've had on supermarket teas. Thank you so much, Yorgi. Georgian teas. Georgian supermarkets seem to be doing a decent job. It helps that they are homegrown, of course, so that they can access more teas direct from source. But nonetheless, you need to give credit where credit's due. And I certainly think a couple of these teas were very, very drinkable. So let me know your thoughts on the discussion point of whether or not I should continue to do these reviewing supermarket tea videos. Is it something that's going to drive up quality or drive down quality? I'd be interested to know what you think in the comments section below. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, Taste Our Teas, wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.